Hello, my beautiful and epic friend. How are you? It is so good to be with you for a solo podcast episode. You know, it's been weeks since I recorded a podcast episode. I went out on vacation to celebrate our 20th wedding anniversary, as well as my 50th birthday. And before I left, I made sure I got all of these podcasts done and it felt so delightful to be free of that and, you know, truly embrace vacation. My husband and I went to the Greek islands for a couple of weeks and we just had the most epic time. Epic accommodations, epic food, everything was so wonderful. I posted about it on Instagram and Facebook and some of you have been following along. So thank you for the likes and the comments and it was just such a fantastic time. But it's great to be back with you, and I have a fantastic podcast episode lined up. But before we get there, I want to tell you we're working on some things here at Epic U. I will be hosting a masterclass coming up next Tuesday. So this masterclass, since I've been back, I've been feeling a lot of people going into this like summer slide. We're just kind of not really trying with our goals. We're kind of like, ah, oh, it's summertime. We're just going to take a break. So I want to help you if you're feeling a bit sluggish or a bit like you're on cruise control and you really want to come and focus on getting results on one goal. So the name of the masterclass is Mastering Your Mind to Achieve One Goal. And really the mind has so much power behind it when it's not distracted. So I wanna teach you how to like end the distractions, really focus your mind to achieve something in your life that really matters to you. Whatever that one goal is, we'll figure it out together and we will talk about how to achieve it. So if you're interested in joining that masterclass, you can sign up. I will put a link in the show notes where you can sign up. And uh, the show notes are always available on my website. So you can always find it at epicu.com and just hit the podcast tab and look for this podcast and it'll be in the show notes. You can find it there. You can also email me and my team. We'd be happy to get you that link to sign you up. It's going to be Tuesday, the 25th of June at 4 p.m. my time, Pacific time. 7 p.m. Eastern time. So if you want to attend, feel free to join up and join us. It's going to be an exciting hour where we're going to really focus our mind to get our goal. So I want to tell you about that coming up. I also have another exciting announcement in that I created a document that talks about the 10 habits to epic health. So you know I'm very committed to my health. I'm committed to helping women understand their health and I know our bodies go through times of change. And so I want to give you a tool that you are looking at what are the key metrics that's going to give me epic results, right? Epic health. That's what we want as we age, particularly as we get older, right? Because we want to maintain our great health and have epic health for life. So I've created a free worksheet where you can download this and make sure that you are looking at these as your daily habits as your weekly habits. Are you getting these in? It's really important that if you want to have optimal health for life, that you're doing these habits now. So I have that document for you and you could get it again in the show notes or again, email my team and we can make sure that you have that. I'm also going to post it in the free Facebook group, Health Habits and Epic Living. I will be posting it there as well. The link there where you can download it. So you can join a Facebook group and find the information there as well. I'm so excited that I've created that because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, reading a lot of books, really learning how to have health and longevity. And I think given what we've been through, we owe it to ourselves to give ourselves optimal health. And the last announcement before I dive into today's podcast is that I will be launching Tone in 10 again. Super excited about that coming up. I know women who have been in this program have lost inches off of their waistline, inches off of their waistline, right? When you know how to banish belly fat and you implement these 10 healthy habits, it's a slam dunk. I, and I love hearing the results of the clients that have been through this program. And so I know people are like, oh, this summer thing, this summer weight gain, I just want it off. And so this is to become stronger. It's to also to become metabolically healthy, meaning you are increasing your metabolism, you are becoming metabolically flexible where you're just not storing fat, but your body is learning how to burn fat 
And so there are certain strategies in order to be able to do that. And I teach all of that inside of Tone in 10. So that will be launching soon. So keep a lookout. If you're on my email list, we tell you everything on our weekly newsletter and we make sure that you know. So if you are interested in joining, you don't miss that opportunity. All right. So for today's episode, this concept came up when I was interviewed on Dr. Eric Balcavage's podcast. And we were thinking about like, how were we going to structure that podcast and what we would be talking about? And we came up with like this concept of habits. You know, I think sometimes it gets overlooked or we talk about it so much. It's kind of like mindfulness, right? You, you talk about it so much. It's so mainstream that people start to really not understand what mindfulness is, right? If you ask 10 different people, you'll probably get 10 different answers. Some people think it's, it's meditation, right? But it's so much more than that. So for today, I want to talk about this concept. We're talking about habits versus behavior. So when you think about that, right, a behavior, and in my definition, a behavior is something that you do one time or not consistently. It's a behavior, right? So we went to Greece. We were on vacation, right? Do we vacation all the time? Well, we probably vacation more than most, but we don't vacation all the time. Vacation is not a habit. Vacation is a behavior, something we do occasionally, something we do every now and then, something that we do infrequently without consistency. A lot of times we think about, I did the behavior, but is it truly a habit? So a habit I define as a behavior we do consistently with regularity, right? Like brushing our teeth. We, we do that with consistency. That is a habit. And for most people, it's a once a day or twice a day or even three times a day habit. And it's done with consistency. And that is the importance when we're looking at our health and how to move the needle on our health, right? Going to the gym one time is a behavior. Going to the gym consistently, whether that's two days a week, whether that's three days a week or just working out at home, doing it with consistency builds the habit. Now, why is that important? Well, I'm all about habit change and doing things that are going to move the needle on having an epic life. And when I was over drinking and had an over drinking habit, I will tell you my life was less than epic. I was beating myself up the next day. I had guilt and shame around alcohol. I felt I couldn't control it, right? It felt like it controlled me. It, my desires and my cravings for it felt like they controlled me. I didn't control it. And it was a habit because it was something that I practiced routinely. It wasn't just a one-time behavior. It was a habit. And so whether you struggle with sugar or food or desserts or alcohol, all of these ways that we do these things on autopilot, on a habit, right? They become the way we are around that substance. So we can have a habit of scrolling right when we wake up in the morning. We're picking up our phones and scrolling, right? And does that habit lead to benefit in your life or does it detract in some way in your life? And so I think it's really important to understand that behaviors don't necessarily form habits. And a behavior is something like you have to think about it to do it, whereas a habit is more of an automatic. Why? Because you have the neurons and you've laid down the neural network so that it just becomes autopilot. Like, I really don't think about brushing my teeth. I just do it. I don't have to be motivated to brush my teeth because motivation's not part of the process. It's just you do it. You talk about people who go to the gym regularly and they will say, yeah, I go on days and some days I feel like it and some days I don't and I still go. It's not about motivation. So I love thinking about that because a lot of times I will hear from women, I'm just not motivated to do X. And so I don't think you actually need motivation when something is already habituated. So when it's already in a habit state, when it's already habituated, you just do it. Like brushing your teeth, you just do it. Like driving to work, you just do it. 
So I think it's very interesting to look at when you are wanting to change your habits or do a different habit, if you're relying on behavior change or if you're looking more towards habit change. So I really like this quote that James Clear has, and it says, new goals don't deliver new results. New lifestyles do. And to me, lifestyle is a habit, right? If it's part of your lifestyle, it's part of your habits. It's part of your lifestyle. It's something you do routinely. And a lifestyle is a process, not an outcome. For this reason, all of your energy should go into building better habits, not chasing better results. So I broke up that quote a little bit to describe that first part of James Clear's quote. But if you notice, all your energy should go into building better habits, not chasing better results. So we think about, oh, I want to change my relationship with alcohol. Yes, that's the result. But let's look at the process of the habit. What are the habits that you're going to do that's going to give you that result? And this is something I'm going to break down in the masterclass, which is why I want to be doing this masterclass to help you really focus in on what needs to happen so it just becomes habitual. If you want to be somebody who goes to the gym every day or gym routinely, let's say, it doesn't have to be every day. That could be actually unhealthy, right? If we go too much, over-exercising produces bad results too. So we want to make sure that there, we are in that you know, Goldilocks zone. But if you're wanting to really change something in your life and get a result, we have to be looking at, is this result something you want long-term? Like a complete change in your relationship with alcohol, a change in your relationship with sugar or processed foods or highly processed foods, then really let's look at how to make this automatic and not something you have to think about all the time to get just that one-time behavior change or that two-time behavior change. So as I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about the times that I have done a sober October or a dry January. And I was focused on getting through that month. I wasn't looking at changing my drinking habit long term. It was just a short, finite behavior change for the month of January. And I thought that behavior change in January would just carry over to February, March, April, May, June. And in my case, it did not. And then when it did not, and I was just focusing on my behavior rather than actually setting up a new habit, I was like, wait, I see why this never stuck. Because I was focusing on the behavior around drinking and around alcohol just for that month of January. And it was focusing on the behavior rather than instituting a new habit. And as James Clear points out, right, it's really when you want to build better habits, you focus on that, not chasing the result. So that is the difference. And I believe it's become so much easier when you're like, oh, I'm going to make this a lifestyle change. This is a habit change. This is not something short term for January, short term for October. This is something I want to institute for a long time. And now that mental shift now has you thinking about it differently and potentially that can influence the behaviors that you do, which is really neat. And it also starts to change how you think about yourself, which is a big concept of habit change, is focusing on your identity. Because your habits will become your identity. A one-time or a few-time behavior changes often don't become our identities. It's those consistent changes that we make over time, those things that we start doing more of, doing more of, doing more of, showing up more like this, showing up more like this. And now we're like, oh, yes, my identity is shifting and this is becoming more automatic. So I tell you all this because I see people struggling with that same 10 pounds to get it off and they get it off and then they get it back on and then they get it off and then they get it back on. Or they struggle with the drinking, they're good for a month and then they're not good the next month or or whatever time period, right? It's that constant struggle. And that constant struggle should highlight something to you. Maybe the process that you're using isn't working. 
And maybe there's a better process where you can habituate this, where it just becomes part of you. It becomes part of your identity. It's your habit. And now you've changed and it's automatic. So I would love to help you with this. And if you struggle in this area, would love to help you in the masterclass. I will be bringing people on and providing individual help. If you are feeling stuck and you really want to know more about this, we could do a deeper dive inside that masterclass. Now, I will tell you, it's really important, right, that behaviors are also important. I'm not saying that just to poo-poo behaviors. There are some behaviors which we want to do just a few times, but then not be a habit. But many people, I feel, they struggle with the behavior and making it into a habit. And therefore, my friend, focusing on the process is going to give you much quicker, much faster results than just focusing on the end result or the goal, right? I just want to lose 20 pounds. I just want to lose 20 pounds, 20 pounds, 20 pounds, 20 pounds. You step on the scale. It's not 20 pounds yet. 20 pounds hasn't been lost. It's been one. It's been two. It's been three. And you frustrate yourself because you're frustrated with the process because you're focusing on the goal. What if we got you focusing on the process, enjoying that piece, enjoying who you're becoming, enjoying the results along the way, and then you just enjoy the process. So then when you get to the end, when you get to the result, you also enjoy that piece as well. And that's when it becomes easier and you're not as struggling with yourself and you're not fighting with yourself and you're not disappointed the whole time because who carries out consistent activity when we're feeling disappointed? It's very hard to do. You have to drum up willpower and you feel like you have to fight yourself every day to do the right thing or do the thing that you're trying to make into a habit. And so I want to make that process easier for you. All right, my friend, this was great time to be with you. Loved seeing you again. Loved being with you again. And until next time, be epic.